Oh, that's awful. Oh. Oh, God. Red's Wicked Blood Orange. Don't recommend it. Lining Google. That's a company I like. Delicious. This is the Cherry Blonde Lager. Mmm. Oh, that's so much better. Ah. Oh. Anyway, my name's Fanta. Welcome to FantaVision. And today is not a Tales from Retail. Now, I normally do Tales from Retail on Wednesdays, but today I wanted to go back to what really kicked off these Tales from Retails. And that was my GameStop is Garbage episode. I want to do, I want to do episode two of that because... Not only did I work at GameStop, and I had a really crappy time doing that, and I have plenty of stories to share, and I, I will continue that series, don't worry, but I've also had a lot of experiences as a customer of GameStop, because I've been shopping at GameStop for a long time. Um, maybe not as much as I used to, but, you know, I mean, I, it was a game store, and when I was a kid, I loved going to GameStop. I loved it. It was great. But now I've grown up, and of course now I go, you know, deal hunting, game hunting, all that kind of stuff. And so I've started shopping at GameStop less and less, but still have plenty of stories, guys. Plenty of stories. And I'm sure you'd love to hear them. So let's go ahead and jump right in. And yeah, so the first story I want to tell you is pretty damn short, so that's why I'm telling two. Um, the first one involved, actually, it was, it was quite recently. I was buying Grand Theft Auto V for the Xbox One. So I have a GameStop right down the road. And this GameStop only had one copy of Grand Theft Auto V for the Xbox One left. And I wanted it brand new because they're having this deal where if you buy it, you get like $3 million of in-game currency or whatever. And that's kind of a lot, and you really do need that much to even have any fun in the game. Because you start out with nothing, and because you have nothing, you can't really make any money. And Anyway, that's another rant for another day. But So I went there, and they had their one copy, but it was opened. Now, GameStop opens games, and then puts the case out in the new area, and then um, when the, somebody wants to buy the last new copy... They take that um, new game and they put the disc back in and they usually put a circle sticker or the plastic wrap back on and that's how, you know, they know it's new. And then we, of course, used to tell them if you take the circle sticker off, which you could just peel it off, put it back on, super simple, but people are dumb, I guess, and never did this, but um, then it's opened and we can't take it back because we can't take new games back. Makes sense you can't take new games back. It really does. But if we've opened the game already, I feel like you should be able to bring it back, honestly. Like, that circle sticker doesn't mean it's new. It really isn't new. And then we had these plastic things where you, you put the game in, then you fold it over and then you seal it. That was a lot more difficult for people to reseal. Uh, but, I mean, most people weren't reselling these new games anyway. They just bought them and they were happy with them. Especially if they're a person that is okay with buying a new game that GameStop opened. They're normally not going to try to do something tricky and bring it back because they just don't care. Now, I care. And this GameStop um, had everything backwards. And adds to the reason why I care. So, I was going to buy the game, but then I was like, well, if I need to return this... And I haven't opened it. I haven't opened it. Can I return it? And they told me no. Can kind of gave them a weird look, and I'm like, what do you what do you mean no? I didn't open the game. You opened the game. This is ridiculous. Now, what the guy should have done, which any GameStop employee should have done, is put the circle sticker on it, or put it in the sealed baggy thing, and then go, well, just don't open this, and then it's still new. So, this guy didn't do that. I don't know why. I don't know if he didn't know what it was, but he was giving me some real attitude over this. I'm like, this is, I, you opened the game. I didn't open it. So, therefore, if I want to return it, I should be able to return it. And this guy was just not having it. So, he was like, I'm not, I'm not buying this. I'm not buying this. 
Um, I think I, I bought something else. I might have given him a bad review. I don't remember. No, I don't think I bought anything. I think I wanted to buy something to give him a bad review just because what the hell? Like he was, he was being a dick for no reason. And when I was asking questions, I even brought up the circle sticker thing. I was like, aren't you supposed to put a st- circle sticker on this? He's like, I don't know what you're talking about. Idiot. Anyway, so that's that story. Um, I'm sure I'll, I'll, I'll dive into the whole um, topic of new games that are actually not new because GameStop opened them and how they're not new because a lot of the time if you're getting a new game that's been opened and it's not been put on the shelf, that game's been played by the employees, I guarantee it. Just saying, that's what we did. There was a policy that let us do that. We could check it out for a couple of days. Pretty neat, but not for the customer. Especially when GameStop still sound is new. If it turned around and became used after we used it, that'd be great for the customer. The customer could save some money. They use the Power Rewards card. Anyway, so that's that. Really dumb, really weird. I don't know why this guy was a dick for no reason. It wasn't even that busy. Like, it was a little bit busy. It was a little bit busy. But... Customer service, come on. Okay, so this other story took place back when I was a freshman in college, which was, oh, five years ago? Oh my God, maybe six years ago. I'm gonna go five years ago. I think it was five years ago. Anyway, that doesn't really matter. What does matter is I was into game hunting. I'm still into game hunting, don't get me wrong, but I was game hunting game stops because this was back when they still carried GameCube games, which I actually had a huge stroke of luck one time. I went to this GameStop I was just complaining about and they had um, a sale on GameCube games. They're clearing them out 75% off of Mario Kart. Mario Kart, um, not Mario Kart again. So there's Mario Kart Double Dash, Luigi's Mansion, Pikmin 2, Pikmin 1, um, and a couple of other games that I don't remember. But I got this huge bundle of amazing games, and I walked out of the store. I think I spent 20 bucks on all that. Crazy, right? I don't know if Pikmin 2 is worth as much as it was back then, but back then on eBay, damn. Pikmin 2, that was like a $40 game. I don't know about right now because I haven't sold anything in forever, but it was a great deal. It'd still be a good deal today. So, I was looking for Eternal Darkness. Now, this game was infamous. Well, it wasn't really infamous, because usually infamous is a bad thing, but the game was famous for screwing, like, pretending to screw with your TV, pretending to delete your save files, all this really unique, cool stuff that you still don't see in games today. Why don't you see that? Why don't you see that? That's so cool. Do that. Do that in a game. Why did my voice get so high? Anyway, do that, that'd be so cool because you see it like switching inputs, changing the volume, your character would randomly die, it was so cool. So I'm looking for this game because GameStop had a pretty decent deal on it, I think they had it for like 12 bucks, the game's still like going 30, something like that on eBay. And I saw that a store down on um, a certain crossroads, it was really far from where I worked, but not too far from where I was living on campus. So I had my coworker call and put it on hold. So I drove all the way down. It took about probably 20, 30 minutes to get there with traffic, even though it was kind of close to over here. It was still very far from over there. Um, but the just tra- traffic is really bad with the, the university and everything. So I'm trying to drive there. And I finally get there. I was kind of flustered from the drive, but you know, I'm like, oh, I can't wait to get the game. It's going to be awesome. He's got it on hold for me. I'm going to take it home, play on the GameCube. Can't wait because I got really into the GameCube in college. I played the hell out of it. So much fun. Love that console. So I'm, I'm talking to the guy. I'm like, hey, I got this game on hold. It's going to be on hold for my coworker's name. And he pulls it. Yep, I do have this on hold. I'm like, perfect. And he's like, are you this person? I'm like, well, no, no, no. He put it on hold for me. He's like, but it's under his name, right? I'm like, well, yeah, but I just told you all the info. Obviously, I'm the one that's picking up the game right now, aren't I? And the guy's like, well, let me call him up. So he calls my store, and of course my coworker isn't working that day. I'm like, well, he's not working today, okay? Uh, let me get him on the phone. And he's, he's, he's giving me more and more of an attitude as I'm trying to prove myself 
um, you know, prove that the game was on hold for me. And it, he won't listen to me. He's he's just keeps getting angrier. I think he swore at me a couple times. And then he literally kicked me out of the store. He's like, just leave. I'm not going to sell you anything. Just get out of my store. All I wanted to do was buy the game. Yeah, really, really annoying that he did that. And the thing is, is that was the last GameStop that had that game. It took me, I think another two, maybe another two years of game hunting. One or two years of game hunting to find that game in the wild. Finally, I have two copies in my collection. Um, I believe one I got garage sale, damn good price. And the other one I got at Bookman's. That's right, I bought something from Bookman's. After I traded in a bunch of crap. Or, no, 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 it was actually better than that. Um, I found a one of those little credit slips in one of my old drawers that I was cleaning out. Like 50 bucks on it, so I just went over there and was like, ah, screw it, I'll buy another copy, I'll eBay it, and just get cash out of my trading credit. I haven't sold that yet, I need to do that. But yeah, so this asshole, this dumb, stupid, ignorant, angry for no reason, and his name was Mitch. I'm not going to say his last name. Mitch the bitch. Had to say that. Had to get that anger out. Freaking just... I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, guys. Why do you do that to me? Why do you, why do, you do that to me? Why do you do that? Anyway. I don't get why the guy was so rude. I just wanted to give him money. You think you, you'd want money for your business? I I feel like I'm being a spaz. I don't know. I'm trying to be more animated because I know in the last the last thing I did with the the um, indie box, I was really everyone thinks I'm like depressed and like I'm, my vibe is killed because the Nintendo PR people kicked me out. It, I, yeah, ish. I mean, eh. but I'm, I'm kind of getting over it. I'm talking to other people. It sounds like a relation. I'm talking to other companies. I'm working everything out. It's cool, guys. Don't worry. I'm Fanta's okay. Um, so yeah, that's that. GameStop. I, I don't get it. Like I've I've had bad experiences at so many GameStops now. Oh, there's another one that just I think it's on the tip of my tongue. I don't know. Even if I did think of it, I'd have to save it till the next episode anyway. But anyway, so comment down below if you've ever had. An experience like that at GameStop. Have you guys ever had a game held for you or held under somebody else's name or have you ever just had them be weird about the fake new games that aren't new? Because I, I feel like a lot of people have because that's kind of a, a thing that a lot of people talk about with GameStop, how they open up new games and that that should be a controversy. Why, why don't they just because what, what GameStop does, let's, let's dive back into GameStop. This is more of a Tales from Retail type thing, but whatever. So whenever marketing would change, we would get a ton of these empty black cases and put cover art in them. My question is, is if the new games really don't change that much, why don't we just have fake cover art for all the new games? What a revelation. Oh my god. No, seriously, I don't, I don't know why we didn't do that. Why isn't that a thing in all GameStops? Why can't we just have a bunch of fake cases? Because sometimes people would steal the case from the new section and then somebody get a generic case for their new quote unquote opened up game. So not only is this customer getting an opened new game, but they're getting a fake box with said game and they're paying full retail price. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. And people bought it. Oh, man. As much as everybody insults GameStop, it's really the customer's fault. I, that's what it is. I, I hate to say it, but if you shop at GameStop, you're part of the problem. That means I'm part of the problem, too. I know I understand the hypocrisy, but if I find a bunch of Wii games at a yard sale and they're charging me a nickel each, I'm gonna take that whole pile, I'm gonna present it to GameStop. And if they wanna give me $80, I'll happily give them, I'll use that $80 of trading credit. Will I give them any of my real money? Hell no, no. They're not touching my wallet, but yeah. It's because people keep shopping there, honestly. Okay, 
that's it. Comment down below if you've had a shit experience at GameStop about the new games or they didn't hold your game or they wouldn't let you take your held game for some stupid reason. I just remembered a Tales from Retail from GameStop and I can't wait to tell you guys next week. So thanks for watching. Have a fantastic day and I'll stop being depressed in my videos. See ya.